Hello, um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome everyone to a new webinar of our phase one webinar series. Our, today, our today's webinar is made together with the experts and real pioneers for helicopter style drone systems. Let's welcome uh, the company Flying Cam from Belgium. Your today's presenters are myself. My name is Carsten Wieser. I'm part of the Phase 1 sales team since more than 13 years now and since quite some time acting as integrator sales manager. And I'm based in Cologne in Germany. Today is joining me from Belgium, Emmanuel Prevenari, the founder and CEO of uh, Flying Cam. Uh, it's not often that I can uh, welcome a winner of two Oscars and one Emmy uh, award during his career building drones for cinema, mapping, inspection, or for many other applications. Uh, flying time credits include uh, work for, for James Bond movies, Harry Potter, uh, Game of Thrones, Mission Impossible movies, as well as inspection of all kinds of high value assets, infrastructure, as well as high precision remote uh, sensing. The Sarah and uh, Discovery unmanned helicopters bearing significant payload and endurance with higher stability and maneuverability for low uh, and high altitude missions against strong winds, extreme temperatures and difficult terrain. Flying Cam is integrating phase one aerial cameras since 2015. Welcome, Emmanuel, to our today's webinar. Yes, hello. So before I hand over the presentation uh, and uh, 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 I, uh, to Emmanuel, uh, let me give you a short overview of the phase one company and, and products. Phase One is a world leading provider of digital medium format imaging solutions founded 1993 in Denmark. We provide ultra high resolution cameras and highly productive uh, software solution. We operate several sales and support centers for Phase One across the globe. In Denver, uh, in Colorado, uh, Denver, Colorado, it's uh, for the Americas region. In Cologne, in Germany, for EMEA region and Australia. And in Hong Kong, we operate an office in, uh, for the Asia and South Pacific regions. Our company headquarters is based in Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, together with our main R&D center. We operate further R&D and production centers in Israel and Japan. In addition, we have more than 50 uh, distribution partners with a global network of sales and support centers, which makes us a fully customer centric organization offering 24 seven customer support. Now we serve the world leading brands with top image quality and productivity uh, in a great number of applications. Uh, let me now give you a short overview about our Phase 1 area products. Phase 1 has been supplying specialized cameras uh, for a wide range of aerial photography applications since 2012. Those cameras are always made on the edge of technology by using the most modern uh, sensors available on the market, delivering the best possible image quality. Um, over the years, we have continuously developed these products uh, to meet the market re requirements. From, uh, from standalone aerial cameras for various applications that can be integrated and used in all kinds of aerial platforms for manned uh, aircrafts or unmanned drones, uh, ranging from 50 to 100 to 150 megapixel and up to 280 megapixel inside our phase one aerial systems uh, or PIS systems, uh, they call, which are turnkey solution uh, for aerial survey flights. Uh, the P3 payload uh, is our latest addition to our portfolio and offers easier integration of phase one uh, IXM cameras for uh, all kinds of, of drones. Uh, here you can see uh, the phase one camera range today. Uh, it's uh, starting with the IXM, the 50 or 100 megapixel camera, then continues with the IXM RS camera series, which is uh, available with 100 or 150 megapixel up to the two large format uh, type cameras with 190 and 280 megapixel. These cameras, uh, 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 the cameras of the ISM series uh, can be easily integrated and used into a wide variety of aircrafts due to its size and weight. The ISM is, Id is ideal for all unmanned uh, 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 drones or anywhere where size and weight matters. Uh, the cameras of the ISM RS series with their even higher resolution are part of our phase one area systems but also are built into a wide variety of aerial imaging systems uh, made by many other integrators around the world. These cameras are also often used, uh, also often a part of airborne LiDAR systems and helicopter-based uh, systems for optical inspections. The IXM series cameras are often uh, used in, in drones in inspection application, applications, such as, uh, such as uh, inspection of bridges and roads, pipelines, railways, 
wind turbines, power lines in agriculture and phenotyping application, and as well as in mapping application that requires the highest uh, level of accuracy. The IXMRS uh, models are mostly used on larger areas in manned aircraft, also for mapping applications in agriculture and forestry, as well as in uh, environmental monitoring for 3D city models and next to airborne LiDAR systems as well. So now uh, it's time to hand over the presentation to Emmanuel from Flying Camp. Uh, let's learn about uh, their exciting products. So I will now give you the rights to present. Just a second. All okay. Right. Good. And I uh, show my screen. Can yes. you see? All right. I can see. Yes. Thanks a lot. Okay. So um, here we go with uh, the uh, flying cam um, discovery, um, as you can see at first. And um, we welcome everybody here to to see the, the future, because we believe we have uh, in hand the future. What I'm used to say is uh, after, bicycle, after the bicycle, the electric bicycle, comes the uh, automobile. And um, there is a, a new generation of drones, mostly single rotor, that will be able to sustain the uh, large scale uh, scenario that are coming now into play with multiple sensor. So Blankham is focusing on that and our future website will be showing the, the big gap that we are creating now with the uh, competition. So as, as maybe some of you know already, we are, our past history is in the movie industry. Uh, we went to work for all the major movies and uh, integrating the most advanced camera and uh, also uh, processing the uh, flight path uh, with a 3D uh, control and creating a bridge between computer graphic uh, uh, images and the real world images and, and then from the real world back to computer graphic. So this gives us uh, an indication about quality, stability, repeatability. Um, now we are completely in a new world. Uh, we are now developing the system for what we name remote sensing in general. And uh, this experience that we acquire worldwide help us to build a product that meets uh, safety, that means the uh, repeatability, the reliability, and now we are moving into uh, maintenance management um, that is uh, inspired from the real aviation world. We kept sharpening the saw um, with a breed of helicopters starting from the Flying Camp 1 in 1986. Now we are with the present product, the Saha, which is Special Aerial Response Automatic Helicopter, and the Discovery, which is uh, heavy fuel, which is a turbine, and it can fly up to two or three hours. The next generation will be the Challenger, which might be fueled by hydrogen or heavy fuel as well. And this one will, will really be uh, um, to compete with full-size helicopter. The Discovery is, has been designed to have the same features of full-size and even safer. Like we have crash-proof fuel tank, we have an automatic pilot that we designed with QNX. For some of you who knows about QNX, it's a real-time operating system that is certified. Um, we have dual GPS antenna, we have transponder on board, all what it takes to meet the requirement from the new regulation and fly beyond this line of sight. The SAHA system and the Discovery are both uh, using the same interface, the same autopilot. Uh, so Whatever you fly Discovery or Saha, you will be uh, familiar with the way it is programmed. So we will cover in the next five years, I would say, a range from 25 to 150 kilo from one hour flight time to eight hours flight time with the same, uh, basically the same uh, interface. Um, now let's go to images and, and uh, data. The, the first job we did in 1980, actually in 2006, uh, was for BASF, where we capture a, a flare tips inspection. But uh, with the progress made with camera, now uh, the same size of that picture, which is basically a six meter um, flare tips, the diameter of flare, that flare tips is six meter today, we can almost cover such a big area with the same resolution. And this is with the phase one. So this is where phase one really shine, meaning we can cover a large area, still having high resolution, high uh, uh, bandwidth into the uh, uh, depth of 
depth of uh, coloration and, and uh, uh, luminance. Here you see, for example, that you have those pipe, uh, irrigation pipe visible uh, on the ground with such a high uh, visibility and high resolution. This, this is uh, done with the Saha system and the uh, automatic uh, flight, including the gimbal, the three, three axis gimbal to stabilize. Now, uh, to do a flat surface like a golf course is a nice thing, but of course, um, the best um, usability of such a high resolution camera is on complex structure. We have an example here with the uh, Grand Palace in Paris. Uh, the production of the Fallout movie, the Mission Impossible 6, requires us to uh, create a digital twin of the Grand Palace. And it was to uh, use it for Tom Cruise to land on, on that uh, rooftop if you, if you watch the movie. And this um, was not possible to do in real life. So they, they used the 3D digital twin that they created out of the imagery that we, we gathered. So pre-planning was uh, key uh, with our 3D user interface uh, and flight planning. So we could make sure all the detail could be covered the flight was uh, done in the middle of Paris, as, as it, it, it is obvious that we needed to get all the approval for that. But we are quite well known in Paris, uh, working since a while. Uh, the first job flight in Paris was the commemoration of the French Revolution in 1989. Uh, so here we see the flying cam Sara in automatic flight. We will see a video right after. The uh, flight was in the middle of Paris with, uh, for example, the metro line going under the road when we were taking off and the dual GPS antenna system helps us to clear the uh, heading uh, solution uh, because the magnetic detector, the magnetic uh, heading compass uh, was disturbed by the uh, metro passing under. So the, the uh, way to solve that was to use the dual GPS antenna system we have on board that is part of the uh, standard version of the system. So here we see the phase one. At that time, actually, we were uh, early in the development and, and now we, uh, phase one is, came up with a solution that is on the shelf, but um, originally we started with the bigger uh, uh, gimbal and we integrated our own IMU on it so we could get a very high precision on the point of interest, uh, aiming to very uh, specific point of interest. This know-how brings us to the, to the future that we will talk at the end of this presentation. So, but uh, now the beauty is that phase one did integrate this solution for you and, and you can buy it from them on the shelf. Here you have, uh, well, the mission was accomplished in three hours. Uh, you know, in the movie industry, constraint is, is very high, and especially, especially when you have an authorization to fly in a very exotic area like this one. Here you have the 3D digital twin reconstruction with all the, the position of the camera that are plotted after the flight, uh, looking at the metadata collected by the autopilot. You can see the precision of the autopilot here because of those, those dots, all those points are, are, um, are taken out of the data collected while flying. Uh, we got thousands of images and from there we could build the density, the point density map. And then uh, this, is, this is the 3D reconstruction. Uh, actually, this is a cloud point. And uh, when we, we uh, visualize the cloud point, it was stunning because we, we could almost make no difference between the cloud point and the, the picture, as it looks like a picture. Um, th this is the uh, another uh, interest here is that we see through uh, the canopy, we see through the window on the right side, you will see the, the uh, camera allows such a high uh, uh, band, bandwidth between uh, an under exposed, exposed part and, and right exposition that you can uh, see a lot. Here we also see that it, it was quite stunning to see the depth of field we could get. Uh, even on the vertical, uh, there is almost 15 meters uh, in, in, a, in width, uh, almost 20 meters of height there. But still, everything is in, is in, in, in an uh, acceptable focus to say that we can rebuild it in 3D. So this is the, uh, um, well, the best proof that we are in the middle of Paris, 
this is very challenging to get an approval to fly in a city center like Paris. And uh, um, we, we had to stay at 70 meters uh, from the surface but for safety reason. And only uh, the base one camera allow us to get to still be far away and get the resolution that is that is needed. Um, another example here, uh, where we, the approval was to fly above the building, because on, on the Paris one we had to stay away of the building. But thanks to the credibility that the Saha system developed, we could fly uh, right above the building with with the XM100 and uh, having uh, the way to uh, set up a payload waypoint, we name it payload waypoint, meaning from uh, the complexity of the structure, you decide which angle the camera will, will use. So you, you can have all the details that are necessary uh, for later on uh, compute the digital twin. Um, as you see here in the interface, we, we combine the autopilot uh, telemetry with the control on the uh, camera head. So you have a way to uh, design your own uh, uh, trigger, meaning waypoint, where you will trigger the camera with the angle that uh, you need for the precise position where you are. And you have a visibility on the top left here on the camera angle from north, from the helicopter position. Actually, you could have it from north as well, but you have it from the helicopter uh, uh, orientation. And you have here the azimuth, I mean, uh, the angle of the camera looking down on it. You can take over in manual if need be, having the helicopter hovering or even flying, or you can have it pre-programmed, or you can have the helicopter, the camera pointing to a geolocation while the helicopter is moving. It's, it's really flexible, um, and of course you end up with something that is uh, a 3D model uh, with sub-centimeter uh, resolution. Uh, here you see uh, one of our clients, Aeroscan, is who's really leading in this particular um, market and uh, they have used uh, that platform that allowed them to fly in city center even uh, without disturbing pedestrian because it's taking off from uh, high above human uh, height. Now the next step for us is automated industrial inspection of Coraline and, uh, and use this, uh, the discovery system with long range to, complete, to, com uh, to provide a complete workflow uh, but that will be probably for the next uh, webinar. Uh, we, you are welcome to uh, talk to us about developing uh, this for your own uh, uh, clients if, uh, in that particular field. Uh, now, just for you to know, uh, FlyCam is providing a comprehensive uh, technology to you from the autopilot, the platform, the integrated uh, application uh, of the uh, payload, so you can monitor the control, control the payload the way you need, as well as here, as you can see, the flight companion, which is a way to monitor you know, the uh, uh, maintenance and uh, the manpower behind your operation. So since we are a manufacturer, we uh, control all the parts that are behind the system, including software. And we, we will monitor the life cycle of your machine and automatically the flight data will be on the cloud and you will be able to access all the um, airworthiness reports connected to your operation. Um, as, as an example, Aeroscan did achieve 860 flights in, in a year and a half. Uh, with uh, the constant monitoring of, of the status of the machine. So that's, that's the, the main presentation. Uh, Karsten, may I go to, uh, to show the video of the Grand Palace now? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, so I, I show a short video that presents uh, the uh, Grand Palace operation. You see here the both helicopter, the Saha 30 kilo, 10 kilo payload, which makes a huge difference with uh, 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 smaller multi-rotor drones, and Discovery 75 kilo takeoff weight. <clears throat> The 
so you see here we are in automatic flight uh, with a pre-programmed uh, orientation of the camera uh, linked to the structure that is in front of the camera. So the speed of the flight is controllable by a centimeter per second. So you, you decide the speed according to the uh, uh, motion blur that you might have, uh, depending on the resolution of the camera, the lens you use, and the distance from the subject. This is all a part of the application-specific protocol we provide into the, the system. So the, 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 what I want to say is the speed of the helicopter will be automatically given to you to uh, respect the quality of the data you want to acquire. So we have uh, here a uh, safety pilot on the cherry picker, but the, the flight is, is automatic. And the Land Rover there is where all the control is coming from. You have on the side, on the yellow box, you might see my mouse here. This is uh, RTK uh, GPS. Uh, there is a GPS antenna on top of it, and it is also the way to communicate with the, with the helicopter. And it's connected, of course, to the uh, inside the van where the uh, remote pilot and uh, camera operator is located. The, uh, the, the, the big screen you see here was in addition for the production people to watch what we were taking the picture. Of. So th there is the interface that uh, is provided by phase one. In, we have access to it in real time. This is a big screen from we use actually, I used to uh, work with for the movie industry. It's a HD quality uh, screen that allow a very clear uh, uh, work on, on the quality while you fly. Uh, because we could zoom in in the picture, check the focus, validate the focus while the client was asking some more detail in real time. So I say, oh, 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 stop it here, stop the automatic process. I want to circle around that part and, and or at least a, a, a portion of it so we have more detail. And then we, we took over in manual. And this interface in real time, of course, allow uh, a perfect uh, calibration. <laughs> Now, this, this guy is Nicola, is one of our engineers behind the autopilot. We are at Flying Cam. Uh, I, I always want my engineers, the engineers, to go on the field, witness what it is to work there, because as you know, huge difference between uh, sitting behind a desk and, 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 and creating, writing software or hardware. It's something else to be behind uh, the flight operation. So here is Nicola, is one of the uh, avionics specialists behind the autopilot doing the, the job himself. So we see that you have a, a laptop. We don't have a, a, a very exotic ground control station. We prefer to have a very, a very simple way to uh, monitor the entire flight. So you don't need any specific uh, ground control station, just a laptop. And from that laptop, you can add several other screens. Uh, right now, we have one huge big screen. At that time, we just got two small ones. But you see all the telemetry of the flight and, and the angle, camera angle uh, in real time and the 3D map here at the bottom. The, the, the Futaba radio here is used just to take control in manual flight if need be, but because normally it's automatic or you have the line of sight pilot outside. But the uh, telemetry operator, the, the one here, could also control the helicopter just looking at the map and, and uh, positioning, positioning looking only at the map. So you see clearly here the cloud point uh, uh, in real time uh, with the, the, the such a high resolution that you, you believe it's a picture. And, and, and uh, this is the end of the video. This is Discovery. So Discovery uh, has that uh, same design, meaning you see two fuel tanks on the Saha, it's uh, batteries. So those are fuel tanks that could become batteries in the future. We want our fuel tank to be separate from the main body, so they are not part of the, of the architecture of the system. So they, will, they could be transformed into 
uh, uh, hydrogen or, or batteries uh, in the future, you see that we can add here are like wings where you can put any kind of sensor. It could be a slum uh, 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 lidar uh, to more monitor the position of the copter precisely from any su subject. In the front, all in the front is about payload. So there, there, there is a place for uh, up to 25 kilo of, of whatever you want, which is the future we, we believe. Uh, several camera will be together uh, with uh, infrared and, and lidar eventually. Uh, and this this will become a way to do large scale scenario. So uh, there we go, um, Gaston. You can, you can take over. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Emmanuel, for all this uh, exciting um, informations about your helicopter drones. Uh, you see that uh, you have really made a fantastic job to to give endurance and I would say repeat repeatability uh, to this group of, of users uh, uh, and thank you for showing the insights on this example on the Grand Palast, uh, I think, which is, is a very good example here. Okay, so let me go back um, to this, my presentation. Yeah. So I hope that you see now our contact details again. So if you have any uh, further question, uh, we are open um, um, uh, by email for it, but we also have uh, now time to answer some questions. So if uh, someone of the viewers has, um, uh, I would say a question, we have Tina in the background, uh, she um, uh, uh, can collect the questions. So there's a, uh, there's a, inside the GoToWebinar app, there is a chat box. So if, if you in, uh, investigate it in on your, on your screen, uh, you can type in the question and we can directly answer it. And uh, but if uh, your your come uh, 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 question come to your mind later on, you see our email addresses, and we also are happy to answer this um, uh, at later time. So Tina, let's uh, see if we have some some questions. Yes, um, hi Carsten, hi Emanuel. Um, we do have a few questions. Um, let me just start with the first one. Um, it's about um, the Sarah being a single rotor helicopter, and how easy is it to fly fly it? Yeah, that's a very common question because the the start of uh, VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, was with single rotor. The um, uh, multi rotor came in when autopilot, very simple autopilot, and almost uh, uh, freeware or, or open source software came in that makes a uh, multi rotor system extremely easy to to design and develop. So now we can safely say that the single rotor that we develop are as easy to fly as any DJI helicopter, with the difference that it can carry more payload uh, and on, the lo on the longer uh, flight time and, and more distance. And the repeatability is, is uh, just mind blowing when you know it, it, it is centimeter precision GPS inside and the, the geo pointing that we can offer now and that will make the future of this technology is just uh, mind blowing. So we know that Above 25 kilo, uh, multi rotor are, are not the solution. A single rotor will always be better. That's, that's the law of physics. So, we, we invested in making those uh, single rotor helicopters as easy to fly as a DJI. Okay, thanks, Manuel. Um, the next question is um, Is it possible to make many photos so that you can stitch this together to a panorama photo at the end? So you, uh, so uh, uh, to stitch the well, that's that's about software to from you know the uh, software that is used to create a digital dream out of those pictures are um, se yeah several on one on the market um, and th this is not uh, the part that we provide though we have partners that can uh, provide actually a full solution um, which is an, a way to create reporting. Uh, based on the data that you collected and the, the reporting will be it's adaptable to the kind of operation you do whatever it is it could be a real estate inspection uh, or it could be a power line inspection uh, so the, the um, data post processing it is something that is quite right now uh, being quite uh, uh, active and a lot of companies are developing their own solution but if you are interested to have uh, a, a complete uh, nose-to-tail solution, we can offer that as well. 
I think you also saw in the video that you uh, can pro pre-program a flight pass um, so that you maneuver the drone in a way that you move it from left to right and enable um, uh, photographs of different positions. And that's for sure uh, then also enable to, to st stitch it to a panoramic photos. But uh, wow. I think the, the approach here that was done is then for um, structure for motion. So it means uh, you do point clouds from different uh, uh, capture images from different positions. And with the overlapping images, you can gen generate pro uh, point clouds, which you then can, can use for building a 3D model out of it yeah absolutely the further questions tina yes <clears throat> so the next question is about the the data um what data is sent um, in real time to the ground so uh, we are having two channels uh, one is uh, for the control of the system which is uh, to give indication of where to go in in the treaties airspace and all the, the telemetry that are connected to the flight of the system. And the second one is about the data from the sensor. So those are two separate uh, channels. So um, this gives us the option to reserve a high bandwidth for the data and keep a, a low bandwidth for the control, which is uh, what is needed. Now on, on the discovery system, we have a trans transmission system that allow uh, very high bandwidth on the, on the very long distance using a uh, phased array system, which is uh, you don't need to steer an antenna to, to get uh, the right direction uh, for the uh, signal to go. It, it's just a fixed antenna and that will monitor about 80 degree of, uh, of uh, signal uh, direction. So uh, it, it, is, it is one of the most important uh, uh, thing, which is communication. The new era now with uh, uh, cellular phone network is also uh, going into play. So this, there are options also to use cellular network uh, um, for communication. And if you want to go further, we can offer satellite communication uh, with discovery, which is uh, unlimited in terms of uh, accessibility of the data. Okay, thank you. And um, we've got um, a final question um, in regards to the major difference. If you could explain the major difference between the SARA and the discovery. Yeah, so discovery is um, um, turbine heavy fuel, uh, which is safe to fly from a boat operation if, if need be. And Saha is electric, purely electric, um, with a, a brushless uh, independent drive on the tail rotor, gearless, um, and it's extremely uh, efficient. And, and actually, this is a very fast helicopter. It was designed for the movie industry. So uh, on those uh, James Bond movie, uh, we we had to, and actually in Game of Thrones, we had to fly extremely fast. The electric motor being uh, capable to be uh, used at different uh, RPM without losing power. So uh, both systems are really complementary. One goes up to let's say 10 kilometer, and discovery goes from 10 kilometer to to uh, hundreds. So those are two machines that are complementary, but they are using the same interface. I might have uh, another question from my side. If you uh, program uh, a flight path, yeah. And you have a point of interest uh, which is on the ground and you fly by uh, to this uh, point of interest can you guide the camera in a way that it uh, should photographs while the the drone is passing by so that yeah, it keeps the, the, uh, the point of interest in in, in focus yeah. yeah we can um the camera will keep uh, pointing to the point of interest and not only that the focus will be remaining correct because while we, the, the, there is a constant measurement of the distance so, because when you approach, the distance will shorten and then will. So, both will be steering automatically together and the focus will be also uh, correct all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, key, absolutely key. And not only that, you could, you could um, change from one point of interest to the other while you move and go very fast from, from one point. But we will talk about that next year. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, thanks much for all these uh, explanations. And uh, Tina, is, if there is no more further question, um, I would close no. down the web webinar. Uh, thanks for all the visitors um, that had uh, um, yeah, uh, joined in uh, to this uh, webinar. 
Uh, as always, the webinar is uh, recorded um, and will be provided within the next uh, two or three days uh, to our website. So uh, you can go back and view it again, or you can reference it to someone uh, you, uh, who also might want to, to see it. And uh, so that's uh, for today. Thanks again for all the viewers. Thanks for Emmanuel for, for your insights and uh, telling us more about your fantastic drones. And looking forward to, to see the webinar uh, next year with you for the, for the dedicated power line uh, inspection. Okay. And uh, thanks again. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So have uh, everybody uh, a good afternoon and a successful day. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you. Good weekend also. Bye-bye.